Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video. Today I want to show you a little trick on how you can test a fuse for continuity while it's in circuit without the use of a multimeter. So the reason that this topic has come up is because a little earlier today I was going through the comments on my channel and if we just take a look at this video here, so this video in particular is the PS4 Slim No Disk Feed where we had to rebuild the disk drive gears to, in order to get the console working and we got a comment from a user called possibilities and the comment said this video is definitely useful but doesn't quite help the dilemma that I'm in I had bought a new game to play on my PS4 and played it for about an hour then I was told that I needed to update it I let the update begin and then I get an error saying that the updated file didn't install so I tried to take the disc out and it wouldn't eject. I turned off the console to manually eject the disc. I get the disc out, turn on the PS4 and try to put the disc back in, but now it won't accept the disc at all. I've tried everything in my power to fix it, but nothing has worked up to this point. Does anyone have any tips? So I responded and said, it may have a blown fuse on the motherboard. Are you able to check the fuses with a multimeter? He or she replied, Unfortunately, I don't have a multimeter, but is there another way to check or am I out of luck until I get one? And to which I replied, you pretty much need a multimeter for any kind of diagnostics, but you could potentially take a small LED and connect one wire to ground and then the other to one side of the fuse and see if it lights up. And then test the other side of the fuse and see if it lights up too. If it does on both sides, then your fuse is good and that is essentially what we're going to be doing today so i basically said to possibilities that i was going to do a video just demonstrating how you can do this on a live board now number one the one issue that we've got here is if the component that you're using to test it has a high current draw there is a possibility of blowing that fuse in the process so this should only be used in desperate circumstances this is, a, this is kind of a little trick that I've used a few times when, for example, the batteries in my multimeter have died and I need to test a component and I just don't have time to go and buy a new battery. So one thing I always do is forget to buy batteries for my multimeter. And also, as a kind of like a tinkerer for many, many years, I have picked up a couple of tricks along the way and I want to try and do a little series where I'll share a few of those tips and tricks so I've owned a multimeter for as long as I can remember and the multimeter I own right now is a Pre precision gold N56FU it's a pretty good multimeter um, it takes USB power as well so I'm pretty much never in this situation these days uh, it's got a load of flux and everything all over it but uh, it is what it is but it takes USB power and things like that so I'm kind of never in that situation these days, but I do understand that the average Joe is not going to have a multimeter. And the reason for that is because the average Joe doesn't mess around with electronics. Now, like I said, I've owned a multimeter for as long as I can remember. And even back when I was a, a young child, a very young child, I was messing around with electronics. And one of the things I used to do was I used to be fascinated with lights. And... I used to make my own circuits, so basically I used to take something like this, I used to take a bunch of LED lights and I'd nick my dad's soldering iron and I'd sit there and faff around soldering wires to them and then put a few batteries up to that and basically make it work. I had this little cabin bed where I used to stick all these lights and make my own little den, so I had a blast, I had an absolute blast. Uh, I do actually have a scar on my hand, I have several scars on my hand actually, um, but the two notable scars are this one here and this one here. So you'll notice that these scars are quite different to the rest of the scars. This one here, I stabbed myself with a Stanley blade, one of these, whilst, whilst stripping some cable for my scrap man brother-in-law. Um, this one here, I actually put my fist through a window when I was younger. Um... But these two scars here are actually burn scars. And the reason I've got these scars is because when I was younger, my dad had this asbestos garage, a really old asbestos garage. I'm talking 25 years ago. I'm almost 32 in a couple of days. And I was about four or five. And I remember putting this little, well, this 100 watt light. So I'll get you an example. 
so this here is an 100 watt light it's a lamp or a bulb as they're commonly called in the uk and this particular bulb that i put into the into the holder was smashed and when i put it in i obviously put it in like this put it into the hole twisted locked little did i know the light was turned on so i threw myself across the garden straight through the asbestos garage and across the garden and I burnt my hand there, I had a hole in my hand, I had a hole there. Didn't bleed because it was because of the heat, obviously, but it hurt, okay? <laughs> Don't mess with AC electrics. Do not mess with AC electrics. But uh, I digress, that's uh, kind of not the point of this video. But the point is, I have always been a little bit of a tinkerer. So I've picked up a few tricks and tips along the way. A few little hacks, if you will, on how we can get around things. And... One of the things, like I said, that I've picked up along the way is being able to test for continuity when we don't have a multimeter. So, continuity mode essentially is basically just an audible sound which tells us when we have a continuous path from one side of a circuit to the other. So, let's say, for example, I've got this LED light here. This is one of the examples I'm going to be using in this particular video. But let's say, for example, I want to check and make sure that my soldering on this LED light, this is just something I threw together uh, to do this video. But let's say, for example I, want, example, I want to check and make sure that my soldering is fine from one side of this line to the other. So what I'd do is I'll put the multimeter into continuity mode. Make sure we've got continuity mode by listening for a beep. And then I'd pop one probe on the one side of the circuit. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky here, but I'll pop one probe on one side of the circuit, so in this case the negative wire, and I'll pop the other side probe on the other side of the circuit, so this test point here. And as you can see there, from one side to the other I have continuity. But like I said, what if we don't have a multimeter? What if there's no way to test for continuity? So the batteries are dead, or we just simply don't own a multimeter. So what you can do in this situation is you can take something that's going to give you a visible sign. So I've got a couple of examples. I've got this LED strip. So there's three LEDs on here. This takes 12 volts. And I've also got the motor out of a disk drive. And this is the motor, like I said, out of a Xbox One disk drive. And this, I believe, only takes three volts. But... It's not going to really cause any issues if we put you know a couple of extra volts into the motor it might burn it out if we put too much volts in but never mind but what we can do in this situation we can turn this playstation 4 on so i'm using the playstation 4 because that is the example that is the situation where possibilities is facing at the minute so i'm going to use this ps4 which i'm working on as a good example and because i don't want to risk damaging the daughter board to this I'm using a donor board so this donor board actually works it's got all of the components you know the renaissance ic is there uh, the rest of the board is dead the motor controller is there but we've got all of the components there that circuit is complete so we're going to get power going through this and let's say for example we don't get no disk feed so if we put in a disk right now we've obviously got no disk feed now the obvious reason for this is because i haven't plugged in the ribbons however let's say the ribbons are plugged in and we want to check for continuity on the fuses before we run along and buy a brand new disk drive because these disk drives for the playstation 4 are expensive they cost up to 50 to 60 pound each sometimes more uh, the ps4 pro i think is around about 80 to 90 pound uh, which is a pretty expensive test because you do, if you have to buy a disk drive and it turns out to be a component level fault and that seller that you've purchased that disk drive from doesn't accept returns, you are screwed. So you're going to want to do everything you can to eliminate everything else before you go out and spend silly amounts of money on a, on a component or a part that you don't need. So in this situation, we don't have the multimeter. We think that one of the fuses might have blown and we want to test it. So if we switch over to the microscope here, And I'm going to keep the other video, the other 
video feed on the screen so my other camera I'm going to keep on the screen so you can kind of see what I'm doing and what I'm going to do this console is on right now and I want to check the fuses on this drive so I'll point to the fuse which we're going to check so the fuse in particular is going to be this one so there's a few fuses on here we've got a what I believe to be a current sent resistor here we've got a fuse here and as you can see we've got a break in the circuit here so we've got one pad here and we've got another pad here or trace and it comes from here down to here but the middleman is the fuse and it's the same here as well so we've got the circuit here the trace here we've got another trace here and the middleman is the fuse now if the if the circuit tries to draw too much power this fuse has a certain rating and this fuse will blow to protect the rest of the circuit so it's essentially just a wire it's literally like this one I hold in my hand. This is basically a fuse. And we want to test for continuity from one side to the other. So what we can do in this situation is we can take something that's visible. In this case, a group of LEDs. And we can pop one probe on ground. So we find out which one our ground is. And we pop one probe on ground. And this is going to be a little bit difficult to see. Um, I'm not going to pretend it's not, but this is going to be a little bit difficult to see. Unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do about that without having just one camera on. But I'm going to try and get it as best as I possibly can. So I'm going to hold one probe on ground. So I've got a ground contact here on the side of this board. And I'm going to try and get the fuse itself in view as well. Again, like I say, it's going to be rather difficult. But I'm going to pop one probe on the... or one end of the cable the positive side onto the end of this fuse just here and as you can see if we take a close look at where those leds are just by my little finger where i'm wiggling now you'll see that this is lighting up so that is lighting up right now i do need to be careful because this will draw far too much current and potentially blow that fuse so we know that there's power going in on that side but what if we don't know where the input to this fuse is? We want to test the other side as well. So let's test the other side. And it's very faint. But you can see that the LED is lighting up. Now I understand that it's turned around. Unfortunately there's not a lot like I said that I can do about visibility. For the sake of this video. Because of how difficult it is to get to these very very small components. But I will do my absolute best. And as we can see there, that is lighting up. On both ends of that fuse, that is lighting up. So we've got that side. And we've got that side. So as we can see, clearly that is lighting up. So we know that there, are, that there is continuity to that fuse. But we don't actually just need to use an LED. We can use absolutely anything that will, that will be able to be powered from that circuit and also which will give a visible sign so like i said we can use a motor so again i'm going to pop one probe on ground now this is going to be tricky because i've got to hold this so as it doesn't fling off so i'm going to try my absolute best to get this on camera i know it's very very poor quality video skills uh, as you can see my hand is sliding around absolutely everywhere and I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm actually going to solder at the one end of this on to the board and the reason I'm going to do that is so I don't have to hold one end and then I can definitely show you both ends so I'm going to solder the ground end on because obviously we need to be able to test both sides of the fuse so if I solder the ground part on then we're going to be able to obviously test the fuse side so all I'm going to do, I'm not going to bother making this neat and tidy. I'm just going to solder it on and basically just dab that like that. So we've got the connection there for ground. We don't have to solder it on, of course, if you can do it by hand. Now, obviously, it's a little bit more awkward for me because I need to be on video. But if, but if you can do it by hand, do it by hand without soldering. So let's pop the other end on here. And we can clearly see, I'm not sure if you can hear this, so I'll put it on the plastic. And that motor is indeed spinning. So we can clearly see that the motor works as well. So as long as we've got some sort of audible or, or visible sign. 
then it is fine. Let me see if I can get that on camera. No, it's too blurred, unfortunately. But I'm sure you can hear that on the camera. That is spinning. So, that is another way that we can test it. So, there is a visible sign that we have continuity across that across that fuse. So, that is pretty much it. So, if we don't have a multimeter, we're not completely screwed there is a way that we can test things and there is a way that we can check for continuity across a line now one thing you can do if you're not comfortable doing that if you believe for example that a fuse is bad then we can take that fuse we can get a pair of tweezers and we can just temporarily bridge across that fuse so right now by doing that with those tweezers because these tweezers are conductive we're basically creating a connection. So we're bridging the connection and we are temporarily creating that connection. And then you can pop in your disc, see if it accepts it. And if it doesn't, move on to the next component. So in this case, move on down here and check this one here. So bridge across that one, try and pop in your disc, see if it accepts it. And that is pretty much it. So I hope you found this video helpful. I know it's a bit of a weird one, but this is just one of the ways that we can work around not having the correct tools. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. If you want to see another workaround or if you want to know if there is a workaround to a certain problem, let me know and I'll do my best to either show you the workaround or find the workaround. And I'm also going to be doing a few more of these where I'll show you different techniques for soldering and things like that when, like I said, you don't have the proper tools. And it might help you to be able to diagnose your problem without going out and spending a couple of hundred pound on diagnostic equipment. So I hope this video helps. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. As always, give the video a thumbs up. And as always, subscribe for more videos. Thanks very much for watching. And until next time, see you later. Bye for now.